All right, welcome to part two of our review lessons on programming structures, where we'll be talking about the repetition structure. And if we recall from yesterday's lesson, we have three basic programming structures. The first is sequential programming, where the flow of program executes line by line in the order that it appears. The second structure we have is selection, which we did yesterday. And this is where the computer makes a decision to execute a section of code or not, based upon the comparison of two or more values. And the third type of programming structure that we're going to look at today is repetition. And this is where a block of code can be repeated multiple times uh, through a loop. Now, as I recall, a repetition structure is a point in the program where a block of code is repeated either zero or more times. The number of times it repeats is based upon an ending condition that we set. And if that ending condition is true, we execute that block of code. So it is, in fact, possible for a repetition structure to not run at all if that initial condition is not met when it first is reached. We have two types of repetition structures we're going to look at. The first is a for loop which is a counted loop that basically repeats the code a specific number of times. And the second is a while loop, or also known as a conditional loop, which repeats code conditionally until some sort of specific initial condition is met. And this can often run indefinitely, especially if you do a while true loop. So the first one we were going to look at was the for loop. And it has the structure of the keyword for, and then your control statements placed in smooth brackets, followed by the code that is to be repeated, known as the body of repetition. The control statements themselves inside the smooth brackets have three sections. The first is our index declaration and initialization. The second is a test condition. And the third is the incrementation statement. So a little more closely, the initialization, this is where we're going to declare and initialize a value for our loop counter. The second section is going to be where we compare that counter to some sort of condition that we want to have passed um, in order to exit the program. So as long as our statement is true, we will continue to loop. As soon as it becomes false, we stop. And then finally, the incrementation value. This is what we are going to update the index by, by either increasing or decreasing its value. So let's take a look at an example. So here we have a basic example. Again, notice the three sections inside the condition statement separated by semicolons. In this case, we have the variable counter of i is going to start at a 1. And I'm going to continue to loop the code as long as i is less than or equal to 5. Each time through the loop, I'm going to increase i by 1. So what this will do is make Smithers move forward five intersections, because it will run for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then the counter will reach 6, and we would no longer move. We can accomplish the same thing with a different counter, showing where we can set it at 10, and this time we can have a negative or decrementation. This will still go forward five intersections. It goes 10, minus 2 would be 8, minus 2 is 6, minus 2 is 4, minus 2 is 2, and then it would stop because 0 is in fact not equal to, um, well, 0 is not less than 0. 0 is equal to 0. So we'd move forward five times. We can also have what's called a nested loop where we place one loop inside of another. So an example we could see here is if I want Smithers to walk all the way around the fence. What I'd want to do is I'd want to loop and have him move forward one, two, three, four, five, six times. And then I'd want to have him turn. And he's going to do that exact same thing multiple times. One, two, three, four times for the whole circle around the fence. So that code would look something like this. My outer loop says I want to do four sides. And then for each side, my inner loop would execute six steps. And after executing six steps, I would turn right so that I'm ready to do the next side in my square. The second type of loop we had was the while loop. And this is going to continue to run until a condition is checked. Right? Once that condition is no longer true, we break out of the while loop. An example would look something like this. If I wanted code that would allow my robot to pick up however many things are on the intersection that's on, I can use this. While Smithers can pick something up, which basically returns true if there's a thing on the same intersection as your robot. While that's true, I'm going to pick something up. Okay. Um, just a side note about while loops here. A lot of you guys like to put in while true loops. Generally speaking, while true loops are not a good idea. 
they're uh, frowned upon unless there's no other possibility way around them. The reason for that is that they can set up situations where if something um, un, uh, that we weren't expecting, unexpected, were to happen inside that loop, we could end up in a situation where this program hangs and stays in that loop forever and ever and ever because we weren't expecting something that, that went on inside of it. So it's best to try and make sure you have an actual ending condition whenever you create a while loop. And sometimes it's also more convenient to, to test your condition at the end of the loop. This is what we use uh, a do while loop for. So in this case, the contents or the body of the loop will be executed first before it is ever actually evaluated. So this means um, we're always going to do the code, then we check to see if we're going to do it a second, third, or fourth time. Um, this is rather unusual to have in programming, so the do while loop is actually fairly rarely used, but it is a, an option for you if you wish to use it. That's it. That's all we have for today. I'll see you in class tomorrow where we can practice what we've learned.